Now then, welcome back to another episode of the FTOG Event 3. Today, I'm trying to work on the bridge. I'm trying to do a little bit of work behind the scenes and I've been messing about with these screens from RF Tools. And they're pretty cool. I like them a lot. So what I want to show you first is what I found out by testing and messing around. And then I want to kind of lay the bridge out a little bit so I can start defining this room. And it's the control center. It's a control pad. So there is some interesting bits that I need to uh, relay to you guys as to what will happen in this control center and how I'm going to set things up throughout the ship in the control center, hopefully. <laughs> right? Let's we'll start off with this screen controller block. The screen controller block, I'll get rid of the squid for a second, screen controller block is essential in RF tools for controlling RF tool screens, okay? Screen controller, fairly simple to make, no problem. Machine frame, we've seen that before, okay? Uh, and it requires some power. So I've uh, filled up a basic capacitor just to uh, experiment with, and uh, this now will scan scan the screens that are around it and there's two connected screens around it these are the two connected screens that it's found so far these are adjustable so they could start off with this being a a normal single screen let's put it up over here right start off with being a normal single screen and then there's several modes you can do with this uh, i can right click thin air to change it to focus mode or wrench mode I don't really know what focus mode is yet, so that's yet to be explored. Leave in the comments down below if you uh, know what focus mode is. Wrench mode though, that allows me to change the screen. So it starts off with a single block face. And if you click it once, right click it, it becomes a transparent block. So you don't see the screen itself, which is very cool. I like that. And then if you tap it again, it increases the size to a two by two. Click it again and it becomes a transparent 2x2. Two two. Click it again and it's a 3x3. Three three. Click it again and it's a transparent 3x3. Three three. Click it again and it becomes that single one again. And you can shift, right click to take the screen back. And that's how I got these 2x2 two two screens here. Just through trial and error, messing around and seeing what we've got. Now in the RF tools, let's go with at RF tools, RF tools. Uh, there are numerous upgrades for the screens. These blue upgrades are for screens. I think that one's a different thing. And counter plus, I don't really know how that works yet. But all of these things are to do with the, the screens, right? Now, some of them, like this energy uh, module, don't cost too much. They cost a little bit of ink. And that's why I was looking at squid earlier to figure out how I was going to make loads of ink sacks to make these things. An energy module, fairly simple, right? Fairly simple and fairly self-explanatory. As you can see here, we've got the engine has, is using one um, one RF per tick or one million RF per tick. I'm not sure what MRF is, uh, but it occasionally goes to a thousand. That is in here. Look, that's the energy module in here, and that is showing um, RF compact format. So that's in the millions. So that must be a million RF per tick or something like that that it's showing. Uh, and it's got colors for positive and negative. You've got a label that I can change the label. So that's uh, that's something I can change there and becomes eng instead of engine. And there we go. You see, it's changing like that. That's pretty cool, isn't it? To monitor energy, you can also show it as a bar, which gives us this bar to show how much energy it's got, which is pretty cool as well. I like that. So there's a few things like that with the RF things. So I'm thinking of setting up one screen with uh, all of the like power supplies to make sure I can see if anything's running out of power, right? And that is fairly simple. You take the energy module and you wander over to a power supply. So this is the power supply that I was wandering over to and you right click it, uh, shift right click it, sorry. And the energy module is now set to block basic capacitor bank, right? And then once I install it in the screen, it will then show me where it is. And the order you put things in will show you the order in which they are going to be producing stuff. So there we go. 
the energy is just below, uh, just above the brine, because that's a fluid controller, right? Fairly simple, fairly cool looking as well. So I can make a screen that's going to show all of the different capacitor banks around the ship for different departments of the ship to show where power is. Now, not all of them have got power in such a way. Like um, the teleporter room has a power dimensional transceiver and also has power up around the back here, which I can't see right now because I haven't left an open slot. Good for me. Uh, let's go up and over here. There we go. So I do have the capacitor bank starting in here. So I could change or add an energy module for this capacitor bank and call it the teleporter power supply. Just to show that I can see that, I could have this as all processing power supply. I could have another power supply that's going to come in from here uh, and have another capacitor bank set up here, you see, that are for different sets of the machines for the six uh, the five times or processing mechan mechanism i can also throw in another capacitor bank maybe above here somewhere in this chain here to show how much we're receiving from the solar panel and stuff like that to make sure that that's receiving and got enough same over on the other side uh, i can add another one in here as well and define all these different power supplies so i can tell where things are getting power as you can see i've done a corridor up here as well now I decided to uh, build it all in and have a corridor all in closed just so that we've got a similar looking place running all the way through the ship. Uh, I've still got to add ceilings and stuff to here, but I'm still messing around with cables and stuff. But anyway, yeah, that's the energy side of things, which is pretty dang awesome. I like that. Uh, text is simply, I just write the text in there and it prints it on the screen. Yeah, Nemson is testing. That's what the text says, Nemson is testing. And you can change the color of the text as well. You can also go for large font, uh, which only really fits on there if we've got a large screen and plenty of space to put it, because it's limited to one line. Each of these is kind of limited to one line, it seems, right? The clock, uh, I messed about with the clock, but the clock obviously won't show any time because we're in the end. And I don't think it registers time. It's kind of like a compass at the North Pole. It doesn't really register where which way is north when you're at the north pole because it just spins around all over the place uh, so the clock doesn't really register time because we're kind of out of time there is no time in the end there's no passage of time in the end the overworld continues to passage of time and we transfer backwards and forwards and all that kind of stuff but in the game there's no real passage of time for it i guess that would work slightly differently uh in the overworld i'll test that out some other time when i need a screen somewhere else down there and then there was also the fluid module. The fluid module is currently connected to the ender tank. The ender tank that's monitoring, uh, br that's giving brine over to us. And I put that in a bar. It's selected to that block over there that feeds brine into the th six, uh, the five times ore processing system. And that's keeping me a Brett showing me that I've got a full 16 buckets of brine sitting waiting for processing. So if that starts running down, I know that my brine tanks are uh, achieving full capacity. So I can monitor things from my command bridge. I can monitor stuff. Over here we've got something slightly different and something really important. This, this redstone receiver, the redstone transmitter is awesome, right? Let's start with the inventory module, right? The inventory module is currently connected to the furnace and I've selected these first uh, slots. And I think slot zero, uh, let's have a look in the furnace. It looks like this is slot zero, the sand, right? Because I've set this up to slot zero first, then slot one, slot two, slot three. So it's either slot zero or slot one. And then if I put coal in there, it will show the coal is in the next slot on. So either 1, 2 and 3 or 0, 1, 2. Something like that. Something like that. I'm not sure because there's three slots. I don't know. Let's get rid of three and see if we still have everything. I go, it defaults to 0. Yeah, it's defaulted to 0. Look, So let's go with 10, whatever. Doesn't matter. So slot 0, 1, 3 in a machine or a device shows what we're processing and what we're doing, which is fairly cool. I like that as well. I like that as well. I've been testing that out on different things. 
uh, the actual module again you shift right click the inventory to figure out where you are with what uh, I may in fact try and do something like that in a, a different way that was just my like test uh, I, I wanted to do it on these things but because there's only four slots it doesn't really show me anything worthwhile on these so there's no point doing it on those things may as well just uh, like click on them and that's about it so I was thinking of checking out this in the uh, hydrophonics lab to see if there was any backlog so we could have shift and click on there that chest now has a connection to this inventory module so if I see that there's something in that on the screen then I will know that there is something in slot zero that I need to deal with so I can see now that I've currently got a load of ink uh, bits I don't know what they're called and squid uh, the squid bits and squid um, seeds or sprouts squid sprouts squid sprouts so I can see that I've got a stockpile building up in that chest and that chest should not be having a stockpile building up that chest should be emptying out I haven't actually allocated anywhere for these to go right now, which is okay. That's good. But having that inventory thing there just allows me to see if I've got any stockpiles building up in the wrong places. So I can then go and sort out why. Maybe I need to void off some excess or anything like that. Or maybe something's appeared in the inventory that shouldn't have been there. Something new, something different, something cool. Like for instance, on this one, I've still got to transfer the Ardite and the Cobalt over to the Tinkers area and do something with Emeralds. But otherwise, I could have it monitoring to see if there's anything in this inventory. And I should be able to see like new resources appearing and disappearing, appearing and disappearing on the screen. And if anything stays too long, then I know I'm receiving a new block that hasn't got a home. So it's quite useful, quite useful. Um, I don't know whether I'd use it for machines like this to see if there's anything processing in machines but knowing how it works is a good thing knowing how it works is a good thing and then we've got the button the button is incredibly powerful really I like that uh, this is a uh, light on for instance and it's a toggle so it will either be on or off and it's a button so I actually press the button on the screen to turn the light on you see and I press the button to turn the light off and the the actual button itself stays slightly uh, indented or let's see if we can get a really close view of this right so you can see it's in it's on the button is pressed in it's toggled and then it's pressed off and you can see that the light is turning on and off as I push the button which is awesome and all I had to do for that was to uh, set the button to link to a redstone receiver so uh, shift click on that it is clicked onto that receiver which is set to channel 17 and then when I put it into there the button has the toggle switch for that so it sends a redstone signal to the redstone receiver which outputs on that little arrow to the right block yeah that's pretty cool I like that so what I can do with this is I can take the redstone receiver and the button and I can go and put this on my things instead of leading cables all around the place like I was planning on putting uh, more wiring in redstone cables to be able to tra transfer redstone signals over to these things so that this potentially would have um, let's put it down on there and turn it around a little bit there we go this would potentially have a redstone signal similar to the lever but I was going to bring it in and out through the the cables and all that and add extra cables in but now I can use RF tools as a wireless redstone signal so with this let me see if we can get it to work shift click that it is set that receiver channel 17 which is ideally perfect have a quick run through here make the most of running through my corridors I'm not gonna be able to fly around above all my corridors sooner or later I'm gonna have to do all this and then we can stick it in here and there we go now the button is a uh, resource uh, resource miner 
Now, I don't think you can have everything showing. Oh, yeah, it's not too bad. So, resource miner. I can turn the resource miner on. And that should have turned it on. We should be getting blocks now, you see? Yeah, so I'm getting now all of the different block types coming in because I've turned the... Um, or no the res resource miner on you turn the resource miner off and we should see that that's no longer gaining anything else once it's run out of power that should stop producing but it i'm restricting the power going to it so i can turn things on and off through a button and a screen and i don't even need the resource uh, i don't really need it set up to a transmitter either but the transmitter just passes that redstone signal on which is nice uh, I believe it can be doing transmitter or receiver, depending on what. But obviously, the redstone receiver passes the redstone signal on to where I need it to go, which means that I no longer need levers on things, and I can control the on-off switches for many different devices in my um, bridge control panel. So I like that. I like that a lot. I like it so much that I'm going to use it a lot in my control panel area. But what I need to do really is figure out where I'm going to put these things because these are not something I can lay flat as far as I can tell. Let's see. Uh, let's put... Um, well, I'm, I'm thinking where I'm going to put my console. So let's put a console on the side here, right? Now, can I place a screen flat on that side? No. I can't place a screen flat. So whatever happens, I'm going to have a screen facing different ways like this it's going to be a screen on a terminal like that so this diagonal kind of view isn't going to work for me i'm going to end up having something uh well i might have something on the big wall over here but i may have my con consoles kind of along the side like this with a screen or two on there like so so i can have two screens two different buttons turn things on and off and then chisel bit something on each side to uh chisel and bits to make that more console like more cool looking with uh, probably these things as well being something console like as well and just kind of chisel bits to make consoles around the place i think i definitely need the floor raising in here Unless I go down a block with these kind of consoles. I suppose down a block might actually look nicer. Let's think about it. Let's put uh, these in here. I'm just using these blocks because I've got them. And then like that. And then have the screens on like so. I can, uh, yeah, I could maybe make the consoles like that. And that way I can run around the consoles and behind the consoles and all that kind of stuff. And just chisel and bits it up chisel and bits it up and add in some different mechanisms and controllers having it so that it's on two heights might actually be a cool thing we can stagger it going up slightly that would be cool yeah i like that uh and the other option for these screens would be just to have a three wide console so let's use cobble for now having a three wide console like so in the ground so i've just got one thing that i control on the ground like that and then maybe something behind it a little bit bigger. So I can see the screens from a, a glance where I am. I can kind of gauge what things are doing and have a control center that I can see different things and go over to different places and turn on and off things via the, the button. So I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit more and I'll show you what I get up to. Okay, so I've had a little mess around. I've sorted things out. I think I've done a good job. So far, so good anyway. It's a work in progress because it's a control center for a lot of the things that are going on in my ship. A lot of the things that are going on in the spaceship. As you can see, the, the, the screen to the side of me have all the various power levels of things that's going on in there. Just making sure that I'm fairly fully stocked. So I can keep an eye on power levels to make sure nothing is eating too much power. That each of those power cells, those uh, capacitor banks are on full rather than on half empty or anything like that. Seems all right. You can also do machines and bits like that as well to check the power levels inside a machine that needs RF. Which is really cool. I like that a lot. Uh, but 
But, 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 let's swap it around a bit. Here we go. Uh, right, so I've designed an area. Now, I started mess messing around with chisel and bits things. Um, don't know what that is. Maybe a scanner or something. I'm just messing around with some chisel and bits. I don't want to get too carried away with chisel and bits, but I do want to do chisel and bits in here. And overall, it's not a bad looking place. It'll look a bit more when I've got a, a roof on and I'm doing some chiseling bits around the place. But for now, it's just nice and tidy. Uh, messing around with this as a chiseling bits as well. Just like switching a couple of factory type blocks in. Just interesting things inlaid into the blocks. And I've painted some stone stairs with the laboratory bo block shape that I've been using for my desks. And we've got laboratory box on the floor. There's also some lighting um, da -da -da, somewhere along here. Uh, that one painted glowstone painted to look like that floor tile the laboratory block the lab <coughs> the lab no the laboratory block <laughs> there we go the glowstone has been painted to look like the laboratory block and uh, so I don't need any lighting in here in particular around the back here and each like workstation has got a screen now over on this little screen here I've decided to just keep track of fluid levels and as you can see, my brine levels are currently going down to zero, which means that the ender tank is running out of brine and it's gathering from all four, uh, all eight, all eight of the brine tanks and still not making enough to keep up with just simple ore processing, which is a bit of a shame, which means I'm definitely going to have to go and do some more work getting brine sorted. I saw other people such as Torgal doing the brine and in his biome it was just out off the chart how much brine he was making just like throwing it out there it was just making brine it couldn't stop making brine it was amazing whereas in here this biome is not making very good brine so I'm gonna have to change that around a little bit as well but it also keeps track of my uh, teleportation dew the dew of the void that we sorted out the other episode so it's keeping track of those levels so I can see at a glance whether I need to make some more. That's the idea of keeping track here. Power levels, keeping track of fluid levels, keeping track of something else. I don't know yet. Maybe on-off switches will go on that side to auto-process fluids and things. Uh, on this bit, this is the bit that I've been playing around with for a little while now. Just getting things sorted out. Uh, these are my void miners and ore miners. Right, My void miners. So I've got a resource miner and an ore miner button. It's telling me how much power is in there currently. So I can see that that's got no power in. Well, 100 RF, but that's not enough for anything. Which means that it's not on. Right? So I turn the resource miner on. It will start receiving power. And it will also start creating the blocks. Right? Turn that off. Let it, And then the power runs down slowly until eventually it stops generating blocks. I've got the ore miner running at the moment and I can see that I've got a couple of ore there that I haven't yet allocated any sort of processing for. And any ore that does pop up there pops up briefly because it then goes into the ore processing system which is here sorting itself out into ore processing. And I'm not 100% sure how this is not showing up all of the different ore processing. I've got kind of an idea for it. Uh, so I've got to check that out now. And then I've done the inventories. These are actually connected to the compacting drawers. So I can see at a glance the five uh, metals ingots that I process through the ore processing and see the numbers of uh, bars that I've got, the ingots and the nuggets and the blocks and all that, just at a glance to see, do I need to turn it on? Well, at the moment, I definitely don't need the ore miner on, so I turn it off because that's what the ore miner generates for me. Uh, there's also the redstone and all that kind of stuff as well. But I haven't bothered to do that, I suppose. I suppose that's a byproduct of the ingots. Uh, and they take up such a large space on the screen, which is slightly annoying. I don't know if that's the thing that I want to do. Uh, also, the teleportation thing. I might stick that over here somewhere. I might put a bigger screen here for something else. I don't know. But I like the way the screens are situated. I like the way that we can walk up to a desk and read the screens. The problem that I've got, though, is that these screens line up with the back side of the block or against the block behind it, whichever way you want to look at it. 
they would either fit on the wall or they fit on the back of the block in front as though they fit on the wall so i can't then chisel uh too much out of these things i'm gonna have to put the actual block down here and then do some chisel work like this into the tabletop in order to put i don't know some uh keyboard and mouse or buttons or whatever but i won't be able to bring it higher than this level i won't be able to raise it higher than this level but i can mess around with that and i can play with that a little bit more at the minute it won't chisel bits these painted stone stairs so i'd have to take that block and then chisel bits it a little bit here and there to make it fit in right but i'll do that a bit later on play around with it a bit more i want to test this thing out though just before we go um i've got well as you saw there i've got some yellowium coming in now i don't want to start at the big reactors mod or anything like that that's not something i don't need a big reactors when i've got the solar panels so what i'm intending on doing is just using that information that i've picked up knowing that i've got yellowium ore coming in now and i didn't have before put it in there stick the yellowium in it lock it void it and then it will never get trapped in there again. It will have somewhere to go, so it will always empty out. And if I can see that this is empty, then I know everything's working properly. When I turn the miners on, if I see something stuck in here, I can come and fix it. And I don't have to think about it. I just see it on the screen in front of me. Uh, to do that, though, I had to pull all this lot out <laughs> and put it into a, a filtered export and that filtered export I will turn into going to the right places eventually. But I don't need any other stuff, so I'm not in any great hurry to do it, really. That's the problem with that. Uh, the other thing is, it is... Let's see. It's I'm skipping the first fluid ones, right? I'm skipping the fluids. Um, I don't know if I can do the fluids from these machines. I don't know. Chemical crystallizer. Um, this is the first section where the crystals come in and turn into shards. Now this is just a standard level 1 and as it comes in and goes out it shows me on the screen. But then it moves over to this, the purifying factory and it doesn't seem to show me what's in the purifying factory. And then it moves on to the elite crushing factory and I don't see what's in there. And I'd set it up to see what's in there and it won't do it. So what I want to do is take out the elite smelter and put in a normal smelter. I just put the in elite smelter back, didn't I? Take the elite smelter out, put that in, and then once it's like that, get an inventory module and shift right click on it to see if that will bring up what's inside that smelter. That's what I want to check out. I want to see what's inside that smelter. And uh, as you can see, these ones are not doing it. So I get rid of that and put in that instead. And then we've got those three uh, three slots there. Yeah, good, good. And then if I get some resource that I can actually cook, uh, let's just get some cobble, shall we? Cobble, cobble, cobble. Do I have any cobble? No. Okay, let's <laughs> let's get some for me, Uh Cobble. There we go. Let's. Actually, something a bit more useful, maybe. Let's get some sand, make some glass. So the the single slot factories will cope with the amount of workload coming from the ore miner. That I'm fairly confident with. Right? Let's put that in there. That should process into glass. Yep, yeah, no problem. That's good. And it should cope with the amount of product that's being produced, even though it's five times ore processing. And yes. So... It only seems to show when it comes down to it being um, a non-factory. See, the basic smelting factory and the elite smelting factory and the, that don't seem to be showing up anything processing, which I wanted to see. I wanted to see the processing. I wanted to see uh, shards and um, crist crystals and shards and dust and dirty ores and dirty dusts and dusts and all those things being processed through this little screen here that's what i wanted to see and then these figures going up not that i can see them when they're in the 20k mark or whatever but that's what i wanted to to show from here and maybe just maybe i can do some chisel and bits stuff around here in keeping and in theme maybe do a make the whole backboard chisel and bits because that shouldn't be too hard 
make a chisel and bits backboard to it so it looks like it's set into the console area but i think that that is all i've got time for in today's episode so i'm pretty pleased with all of these screens and all mining and stuff like that i'm playing with it still um i've tested some of the limitations out and i like it i like it a lot there's things that i can do with it that will make this look awesome and everything can be controlled from my main control center bridge and i think that's great i love it so thank you all very very much for watching today's episode uh, i will see you again very soon with some more avant 3 on the ftog server until then goodbye